Yeah, I'm ready. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Learn with Jason. This week, we've got Vladimir Novik back on the show from Hasura. How you doing? Hey, how's it going? Uh, it's good. I'm fine. Good to have you back. Um, and so today, what are we going to learn? Yeah, so today, like last time when we streamed, we basically used Hasura for uh, uh, adding subscriptions to, to Gatsby site and basically getting the data from the Hasura because Hasura will generate, have to generate GraphQL API for you. Mm -hmm. So we were getting the data when uh, on the like server side rendering part, right? So we mm -hmm. get the static data and we also want uh, to add real time data. So we use subscriptions and we got it working. But we had a fun part during the stream, if you remember, we uh, have like because endpoint was not um, like um, there was no access control, no authorization implemented. Uh, there were some people on the stream that like played around with the, with the endpoint and we got some weird experiences. So this time it won't happen because the main uh, idea of the stream is basically to talk about authorization yes. and access control and roles and stuff like that. Cool. Um, so yeah, I, I'm super excited about this one because one of the questions that I get a lot about Gatsby is how to set up um, user authentication. And so being able to kind of get this set up in a way where we can build a quick app that will allow someone to log in and then you know add and remove data um, and with different levels of permissions. Like, cause when you talk about roles, you mean like someone can be an admin or a user or an editor or whatever. Is that, is that what you're talking about? Yeah. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. And what we will actually implement today, we will have the similar post CMS, uh, log post CMS that we had previously, Okay. but we will have a specific user that will have, um, um, like, uh, specific, uh, we will add the check for this user. If it will, uh, the email will, uh, let's say be the same as, as yours, then, uh, the user will, uh, will be able to see all blog posts out there. And if a user will be, uh, not admin, he will be able to see only his blog posts, something small, but uh, sure. like good enough to showcase. The yeah. Features. I, th I think that sounds great. So, uh, how do I start? Uh, but, well, basically, you go to Hasura.io. That's the first step, right? So you go to Hasura.io, okay. and you can install Hasura in um, lots of different ways. You can run it in Docker. You can run it on any platform. We will use Heroku free tier because it will be really simple okay. for us to do in the, in the first place. So we will go to uh, scroll down, go to Deploy to Heroku, and click on the Deploy to Heroku button. Then we will be brought to uh yeah you need to log in i think i already have an account let's find out um let me yeah let's see pull this off screen yeah you don't log in <laughs> during the stream <laughs> <laughs> if somebody played around with the with the you know that has a rent point i imagine what kind of person do with the your Heroku account. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. <laughs> yeah. I don't, think, I don't think I have anything important in here. So, let's, all right. So, I'm going to name this. Yeah. We'll so, you it. just name it something. Yeah. How about that? Yeah, that'll work. Yeah. And, and it adds use? Heroku Postgres add on automatically because it uses template. And uh, yeah, you just deploy an app. Okay. And uh, it will take 30 seconds to deploy everything. I think like we can put a stopwatch actually and measure that. <laughs> nice. This is this is handy. Yeah. So okay. it's deployed, and now if you click on uh, view, then you will be brought to the to the actual account to the actual engine, and okay. here we have our Hasura console. Now, in a nutshell, what our what the console has, has a graphical tab, data tab, remote schemas, events, and we will walk through them. But the first thing that we should probably do for now is secure our endpoint. Okay. <laughs> <It's probably laughs> right? <wise>. So we <laughs> won't have the same problem. So now if you click on secure your endpoint, okay. then you will basically be brought to part of the docs. And for us, it's relevant to go to for Heroku. Okay. 
so we'll just take the Azure GraphQL admin secret environment variable that we need to add to Heroku okay. and uh, set some kind of secret. So you need to cover the part. Uh, that now you go to Heroku dashboard. This is the other tab on the left. Yeah, Here. and you can manage your. Okay. Now in settings, you will be adding like you click on reveal config bars and you need to add that. Right. So and right. probably Let you me... need. To... Yeah, let me pull this off screen for a second while I set this. I'm just gonna move over to the uh, to the the hiding screen. Okay, so everybody should be able to hear me, but while I'm adding in some kind of a let's. Okay, so now I can hide my config bears, and we'll bring back the video. Okay, so I have set uh, I set this. Uh, Hasura GraphQL admin secret. Yeah, and we've got uh, a good a good secret value in there so that it's. Um, yeah. So now, protected. if you go and reload your um, your console, now if you go to the second tab, the yeah this one, and just go back from the docs back to the console, just click on back button. Okay. And uh, you will be prompted with the secret that you need to pass. Okay. And now it's secure, so now well, no one can play around with our API. Excellent. So, so far, it's good. And this admin secret is something that we used back in the previous stream. We used it from the client in headers, so we can access our API. Now, we mentioned that that is like a temporary solution just for that stream, because this is the, the, the name admin secret, meaning you have all the access control right. to everything, right? Yeah, so because we, we, we don't it, like if we put this in the client, anybody could find yeah. it. Yeah, exactly. So okay. that's what our stream is about today. Instead of using admin secret, which you're not supposed to, you will, will use authorization barrel token with proper solution. We will use all zero for that. Okay. Now let's create actually our um, our um, data and our GraphQL API. Okay. Now if you go to data tab. Data. And uh, now let's uh, create a new table. Let's call it posts. And it will have an ID uh, of a unique identifier, UUID. And you can use gen random UUID function to generate this ID upon uh, post creation. Like that? Yeah, exactly. Okay. Now our, our post will be really simple. It will just have a title. And of type text. text, select the type, and it will have a content, also of type text. Okay. Now we we'll, we will also have users, right? So what do we'll I do? To, do I need to check any of these? You don't need to click that because when we we'll select primary key, it will be automatically. I got you. Uh, added. So um, now you need to basically add the user, right? So in our columns, we will also add user ID. User ID, got it. Yeah. And uh, user ID this time will be of type text. And I will explain in a bit why it's text. OK. So the idea why it will be text, because we will be using all zero IDs, and they have specific format. I, OK. And I what we will do, actually, we will make all the zero write to our Hasura the actual ID from all zero dashboard. We will see it in a bit. OK, cool. So yeah, if we add the table, just hit add the table button. Okay. And um, now if you go back to graphical, you will actually have auto-generated GraphQL API. So notice on the left side, you have one Graph Explorer. I, I love that you got that Explorer in. I, is this not the coolest feature? Yeah, no, we had the coolest one. We actually released the preview we released today. And this is like one really cool feature. So we have this remote schemas tab that will give you an ability to stitch any custom SQL, uh, any custom GraphQL uh, server and uh, oh, basically cool. stitch the schemas together. Now this was, this was here for quite a while. What we added today is uh, something that is called remote joins. So it's still not in production yet. It's like a preview. Okay. But the idea is you can basically connect between uh 
Uh-oh, we froze up. Hmm. Is that me? Or is that Vladimir who just froze up? Uh, the fields of your... Uh, two fields on... Oh, wait, you're back. Okay. <laughs> yeah. All right, yeah, technical difficulties. Froze up for yeah. Uh, okay, so what I was saying, uh, you can basically connect between field on uh, um, like auto-generated GraphQL schema mm -hmm. by Asura and on remote schema. So we will have these uh, like remote joint connections, which is pretty cool. cool feature. That's super cool. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, we, so, we may have to come. We will probably should do another stream on that. <laughs> yeah, <later> on. probably. <laughs> um, <laughs> all right, cool. So we've got, uh, we've got our posts. They got set up. And so now you yeah. said we need to get into auth zero. Is that right? Now we need to set up user stable, actually. User stable. Got yeah. it. So we'll go back yeah. into data. I'm going to add a new tape, <clears throat> add a new table. We'll call this one users. And then I'm assuming I need a, an ID. Yeah. And it will be of type text. Okay. And so that now yes, but... can you talk me through how this is going to work? We're not, it, this isn't like, so let me tell you how I would normally solve this. And then you can tell me yeah. how it's actually going to work. So the way that I would normally solve this is I would end up creating a table of users and I would have to like create my own user. And then I would have like a separate field for whatever my identity services ID was. So it would be like user ID, name, email. And then I would have like an auth zero ID field that I would then link to yeah. auth zero. Are we, we're not doing that? No, we're not doing that. We will actually use IDs because they will be unique. And uh, what we will do actually, our auth zero, whenever uh -huh. it will generate the, when, whenever you sign up, you can write custom code there. Yeah. And this code will basically what it will do, it will use the um, Hasura as a GraphQL endpoint and will execute mutation on uh, passing in headers these like admin secret key. Okay. And what it will do, it will write a new user with all zero uh, ID. That's how in permissions we can reference this ID from like past authorization barrel token. That's in a nutshell. Okay. Okay, cool. So then do I need to have anything other than the ID in this table? Well, name user has it probably. <laughs> okay. So I, I wasn't sure if that was going to be pulled out of, um, out of auth zero, like at runtime or something. Um, we, we can do that with the remote schemas and with the, uh, remote joins the, the new feature, but it's still not in production build. So, uh, you can uh, basically in remote schemas, you can just connect to Auth0 API and just pull all the data based on the ID. So I got you. Okay. Uh, yeah. All right, cool. But we'll so, have name, maybe email. Email. And yeah. there's not like a special email field, is there, right? No, no, just type text. Okay. Yeah, and let's select primary key. Now we need to connect this uh, to uh, tables. So no, not here. You just uh, add the table. Okay. And then in posts, if you posts. go to posts, uh, go to modify. Modify. You can add a foreign key. So you need to add that. And it's, I think it's a bit changed from our last time. So you need to uh, uh, reference, yeah, exactly. Users, and you say that user ID maps to uh, ID. And that's about it. You just save that. It, and can you talk a little bit about what these mean? Because I these I'm, I haven't seen these before. We we can have different violations whenever update happens, and you can basically do different actions based on that. And uh, because you have various stuff such as like on conflict um, attribute in insert and update mutations, and you can use different actions based on that. Okay. So right now we don't have like we we don't want to get into this into this. Uh, and well, so we set up our foreign key. Now, if you go to relationships tab for posts, you will see suggested ob object relationship. Now, I'm if you just add that, add that okay. you will have, uh, yeah, just save it as a user. Okay. And so, and if you go talk, now to graph, talk me through why we just did both of those things. So we, we added a foreign key. Because, it was that in Postgres. Yeah. Yeah. And then the and foreign then, key added in Postgres. And then the relationship, the, this is for GraphQL. Yeah. 
this is also like added um, uh, in Postgres, but the thing is not uh, always you want relationships whenever you have foreign keys. So we gave give you an option, like okay. a suggestion okay. to add okay. this relationship. And uh, now if you go to graphical tab, you'll basically, uh, you'll be able to query your posts and your users and everything. So just query post with the user and yeah, name. Awesome. And uh, yeah, you will get this post. So basically this is the first step that we have. Now, what we need, we need to get users, right? Mm -hmm. So what we'll do, we'll go to auth0 uh, auth and we'll log in and set up a new app. Okay, I'm pretty sure I've got one of these. Let me check my thingy here. Um, okay, yeah, that I got one. So let's do... Why is that not working? Let's log in. Uh, maybe I can log in with GitHub? Yeah. Okay, don't want to use the Gatsby stuff, so let's switch to my own. Oh, that's right. I did dumb stuff and yeah, let's create a new application. <laughs> yeah. I, I thought that I was putting <laughs> this I thought I was putting the Gatsby app on my stuff and I ended up putting it on uh or yeah. Gatsby on its own thing and yeah, I don't know how Auth0 works. So anyways, uh, I'm creating a new thing. And so we'll call this um, Hasura Auth Livestream. Um, yeah, now you, you um, it's a single, web, uh, a single page web app. So okay. get it from here. And uh, yeah, yeah. So the thing is here, these ones will give you, like the links there will give you different um like client side um authenticators uh -huh. so we'll probably use react one and uh we can basically do that just download the sample for this app but before that let's just configure stuff and uh, basically we s we will set two things <coughs> first one we will set um the rules for custom claims so what we want to achieve right we want before like uh, having our users read into database. As, let's assume they are there, right? So what, what we want to achieve, we want to add a new rule for custom claim. We'll, we'll add a custom claim with yeah, just empty rule. Okay. And uh, uh, like the code here, what you will write down is uh, basically. Actually, it will be easier to copy paste that from uh, tutorials that we have. So if you go to learn.hasura.io. Is it uh, this one here? And yeah. Yeah, this one here. So we have tutorials on lots of stuff. Uh, if you just uh, go to learn.hasura.io, uh, then you will see tutorials on client side, on uh, server side, everything. And uh, if you just scroll down. Oops, what did I just do? Just chat just go to that here um okay <laughs> so, yeah uh, so you will have tutorials on all of these and this is like yeah reason ml is coming really soon also awesome and uh and yeah so we're in so what uh, we'll go to hasura one yeah to back in tutorial hasura one and, and we scroll down it's about different app but we uh, we go to authorization mm -hmm. and uh authentication actually because we are creating auth zero right now and uh, here, we already created our Auth0 app. Okay. So what we will do now is, uh, yeah, rules for custom JWT claims. So that's what we're doing. And uh, basically, this is the code for our rule. So let me let me walk you through that. We create a namespace for JWT claim, and we basically set uh, allowed roles as users. And we set our user ID as access for a user ID. Now, what will happen? This custom claim will be decoded into authorization there token. Okay. Uh, that will be. It will get back to you from all zero. Now, this there token, uh, Hasura will know how to parse that, and it will uh, pipe the access for a user ID 
and the role into permission system that we will use later on. Okay. And so, so. this this is going to give us an ID token namespaced here that includes yeah. the default role, the allowed roles, and then who the user is. And so this isn't actually yeah. going to set anything up for the user. It's just going to give us the data so that we can set it up. Exactly. So okay. we have two things to do. One is custom claims and the other one to uh, to sync the users with Hasura. We are okay. doing the custom claims right now. All right. And do I need to change generation. anything here before I save it? No, you just save the role. Okay. And uh, that's about it. So um, yeah, the next thing we we'll basically need to sync uh, users for the rules. So it, we also have the code there in the tutorials. So if you go back to the tutorials. Uh, where was I here? No, here, here. Uh, yeah. Uh, if you, yeah, connect, we will do this in a bit. Uh, so we're not. We'll connect yet. this in a bit. We don't do. We won't do it now. We'll do okay. it later on. Uh, but the the next step, if you just continue to the next, uh, to sync users with the rules. Yeah, exactly this one. So what we will do, we need to copy this code, and we'll create the new rule. Okay. So I'm going to create a new rule. How do I get? Go back to rules. Create a rule empty rule and we're going to call this one Asura sync users if I could spell. All right. And so now we get out the user and the user ID is coming from auth zero. The nickname is yeah. coming from auth zero. Um, the admin secret, that's what I need. That's what we set up for, um, earlier for to secure the endpoint yeah yeah okay so you need to put this admin secret uh like the, the actual admin secret and okay. you need the endpoint that you had from the from us okay and so my endpoint is this one and i get that Where from hasura from yeah uh if you just scroll up here yeah from here okay so this one i'll set up here and then I'm going to have to pull this off screen to do that part. Um, once we have those, we're sending a request, uh, post request to our URL yeah. with content type and the admin secret. And this includes a GraphQL mutation. So basically what's happening is we're saying once we've set this up, grab out the, the appropriate data and then send a mutation to Hasura that inserts a user with this information. Yeah, that's right. Okay, perfect. Let me pull this off screen real quick. I'll add in our, our, uh, admin thing. So, yeah, the admin secret is what I was trying to say. Uh, let's save that. And then I'm going to get out of the rules so that I can pull this back on screen. Okay. All right. So I have, uh, I have, saved this with that admin secret. That's the only thing that I changed. And um, now what? So now what you need to do is basically um, let Hasura know how to decode your, um, basically your authorization barrel token. Okay. So for that, we have specific uh, URL. It's, it's more of a, like a helper thing. So if you go to Hasura.io, and uh, jwt-config slash jwt-config. Oh, cool. So you can select a provider. Yeah, auth0, and you can just enter your auth0 domain name. What was it? Um, it's in applications, if you get into application. It was and, Asura, uh, live app. and the domain, yeah, this one. So this is the key okay. that you need to add to environment variable. Now, how do you add that? You go to Heroku. I go to Heroku. And you add another config var. Okay, so uh, I can't do this without showing that, that secret token. So 
Yeah. Um, what's the... So what you will, uh, let, let me just explain and then, uh, so what you will do, you basically add Hasura underscore GraphQL underscore JWT underscore secret. Then you just paste the, the content of okay. uh, wh whatever you get from the tool. And that is, I believe here, Hasura underscore GraphQL underscore admin. No, no JWT. No, JWT. Yeah. Got it. Okay, so we're going to set this one, and I'm just going to pull off screen while I do that so that I don't give away yeah. all my secrets. Yeah. So Hasura underscore GraphQL underscore JWT underscore secret. Paste in that, uh, that key. Hide my config there's and come back. All right. So that's now set. Anything else? Yeah. Uh, so what we now want to uh, no, basically what we we done we kind of configured auth zero, right? So you already add this in config bars, right? Yes. So right now there is a URL. Let me just find that so to just to test that, right? So uh, let's actually go to learn tutorials and it will have the test URL because it's a long one. Uh, into, we already done sync users rule, done uh, with one. rules. Now you want to test that. Test it. So, yeah. Okay. So if you go here. So I need to take. Now you impl uh, replace your all zero domain with the one you created. And uh, it's not not only that client ID. You need to replace client ID. Oh, I get you. With okay. uh, client ID that you got. Uh, client ID. Anything else? And it will also have callback URL in the end. Callback URL supposed to be uh, localhost three thousand dash callback. Okay, now I don't have anything running at 3,000. Is this going to blow up on me? Uh, it might. Yeah. Um, let me think. We, we can actually do this from the app later on to get this token. Okay. But uh, just try to execute that. Maybe it will do something. I, I'm not sure, though. If you log in, if you open the console. So I think, we yeah, I mean, a, we need to, set, yeah, we need to set something on 3000. Yeah. Um, so I think we need to add a callback URL, but do I, uh, yeah, sorry, I forgot about that. We need to add callback URL there. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Let's see. Uh, slash callback. You slash have to add slash callback. Slash callback. Okay, so that's set. And I'm going yeah. to save. Now you save the changes. Try to run that. Because the load. thing is, I think it will re redirect with a uh, token in the URL itself. Not really. Let's see, we got the client. Callback. Yeah, we're good with the redirect URL. Uh, yeah. I sign oh, I probably need to sign up, don't I? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. But I'm yeah, still, still I think we'll just implement this later on in the app. OK. Um, yeah, so let's start with implementing our app, actually, with Gatsby, so we can just do it right now. So the first step, what we need to uh, do, we can go to all zero. This awesome. will be good testing, actually. We can go to all zero, and we can get this React wrapper that they had. I think if you go to dashboard, you will get those, if I remember correctly, or into application. Or. Uh, 
Yeah, okay, React. So I can just download the sample. And we already uh, set. Ah, have you set the lock of the allowed origins, by the way? No. Now let's do that. Yeah. Also need to do that. And yeah, we can just run this up and just test it really quick. Everything working. Okay. Let's it will be pretty here. easy to add this to Gatsby. GitHub, that seems like it'll be. Yeah. Is this the one that I'm, let's see. Yeah, this is just React login they have. Okay, let's clone this. What am I? Okay, so I'm going to, um, I guess we probably want this to be, is this a temporary directory or are we trying to port this over? Uh, let's try it in temporary directory because uh, I think we'll be better using of zero um, authenticator later on because we don't want all this like boilerplate code. Okay. And then we were going. It's more like not Hasura temp is more uh, more of like auth zero login temp, but yeah, yeah, yeah it's true. I, it's uh, it's <laughs> it's where my brain is today. All right, so I'm at the the login thing. Um, yeah, and then they wanted me to do what? Now? Can you just, just try that URL really quick that uh, with the callback, or you already closed that? Well, there's there's no this callback. Okay. okay. No, the one, the, the long URL with O0, like to test things out. Like the long URL we grabbed from uh, Learn Tutorials. This one? Yeah, this one. Can you just rerun that? Because you already added uh, allowed web uh, application URLs, right? Uh, yeah, so it was this one. If you sign up. If I sign up. Yeah, it still doesn't like it. Yeah, still okay. Um, yeah, just let's let's just run that. Uh, package. So yeah, uh, then you just out that. What was it? It was just different start. Okay. Now probably we want to customize it a little bit to just console log our token. Okay, let's. Or uh, actually, we, we will see it in the URL. So we will. We, okay. Let me start yeah. it again. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> okay, so I'm let's going sign to up. sign up. Boy, it hates that. Um, let's try. Have you set up web application URLs in the dashboard or zero dashboard? Uh, or maybe it's because of the GitHub, actually. Yeah, try with the. What? I'm trying to sign up. They have these uh, weird rules. Um, okay, <laughs> you need to so match. Make me do. All right. Uh, let's do. Why is it? This is okay. Not, that, uh, not can the can you go to Alt Zero dashboard? Let's double check that. If you go to uh, okay, we had rules and application type, load callback and web a uh, load web origins. Okay, we have that. Yeah. Have you saved that? I thought I did. Mm -hmm. it says it's saved. I'm in this one. We are, I mean, that's the right thing. This is the right thing. Uh, we also need, uh, we also need to, uh, to add all of these in the code. Like you clone the repo, but you haven't set up all the like domain and the client ID in the code, right? So you just try 
running the one that you clone. Oh, I love this shortcut. Um, Instead of code dot, you just do like teach dot. dot. Yeah, it's a it's just an alias that opens up code with a different set of settings. Nice. Um, that like removes a bunch of plugins and stuff so that it's not quite so visually busy. Uh, yeah. Okay. So I'm it will have here. somewhere the I think it's some config file somewhere okay. above. Auth. In auth, yeah. And auth, auth zero variables, yeah. So that's why it's failing. So you need to set up the main. Is it like the full domain? And the full domain, yeah. Client ID, I think, is still on my clipboard. Yeah, and the call URL is fine. Now, what we will also do, let's go to auth zero JS. This one? Yeah, and let's uh, just scroll down. We will have uh, logging somewhere. This one? Yeah, so we authorize, we handle authentication. And before we have a set session, let's just console log the whole auth result. Because we need to double check that we have everything set up. No. Yeah, that's that's about it. Let's just try to run that. Okay. You need to sign up. All right, I'm going in to sign up. And let's just try it again, I guess. Uh, here, and it was something that it will like. Let's try that. Oh, shut up. OK. Now in, uh, OK, that's, that's, uh, that's OK. If you look at the, the, the whole URL above, you will probably see the token there in the response. Uh, no, it's really no. It it bounced us back to something else. Um, yeah. So, uh, should I? I mean, should I just set up like a whole new? Let's maybe instead of just using uh um, instead of using their custom thing, maybe we'll just set Gatsby with everything. And uh, we'll add with authenticator, auth zero authenticator, and then we'll get everything working. Well, um, so I, I'm down to do that. My main concern, though, is that it seems like this is redirecting us to a different app. Like, this seems incorrect. Um, yeah. Because it. What if you just try the domain without auth zero dot com? Maybe that's. I remember in domain name you put the uh, like the whole URL, like this one. Yeah, that's what you put as domain name instead of. Uh, I mean, in the code, in the in the VS Code. Um. So yeah, it was pulling in. In all zero variables. It's pulling in the domain. Yeah, maybe this one. Okay, it failed to compile, which is already. Wait, why can't it resolve? Uh, it all cannot zero resolve variables. all zero. What? Oh, Jesus. It's trying to load. <laughs> that is super confusing. Okay, let's try that again, huh? Um, just. 
they had those examples. Well, they, that's hilarious. Yeah. Um. Okay. All right. Hey, <laughs> a thing is happening. Finally. Um. All right. Let's let's try logging in. Okay, but we do need the well, full. You need domain. to sign up. But you have the you have the token if you get your response type. Sorry. Let me let me rephrase. It's trying to it's trying to redirect us to that domain. So we got to set the full. Ah. Uh, yeah. Um, but I think it looked like it was without the HTTPS. So auth0.com. Let's try that again. Back reload. Now it's set. Okay. So yeah. let's try. How does the user You're pretty already fast on finding this? Uh, I don't know. Okay, it's r wrong. The wrong password. Ha <laughs> ha! We did it. All right. Um, yeah. Okay. <laughs> <sighs> okay. So uh, we have the token now. The main question is, what happens if you go to Hasura now? If you go to Hasura dashboard, let's see our rule kicks in or not. Here. That's no. Nope. I assume it is. Where were we? To the, it's on the, somewhere. <laughs> I lost it. Maybe I. You can it. just open it up from yeah from here. You can just click on open up. Okay, all right. Let's go to data. Data. Users and users. And we don't have a user, so something got wrong with our sign up. So let's see. What we, uh, how our rule is defined in all zero. So the main thing we want on sign up, we want to write down uh, things to Hasura, right? Mm -hmm. That's the first step. The second step that I want you to check before that, actually, can you just copy paste the token that you got? Copy no, paste the this, token that I got. And the token from the actual in the in the console. So you need to get uh, the ID token. If you just copy paste that, you can go to jwt.io. And that, that's how you, you kind of debug things with uh, JWT. You just copy it here. And as you can see, we have custom claims. On the right side in the payload data, you will see access for default roles user. Mm -hmm. And the user ID will be this one, the auth0. That's why it was text, right? I get you. So we have one step working pretty well. Now what we need is to figure out why we couldn't try it, uh, our user. And uh, for that, let's go to our rule and, and check our rules. OK. Um, so we get the rules. We've got uh, the rules. We have sync users. And so that one's checked. This right. this one is is working. All right. The problem so, that we had was with the uh, writing things down. Yeah. So the the challenge here is as soon as I open this, our our secret is going to be exposed. Um, ah. Okay. Okay. Let Let's don't do that. Let me just double check out something. Why it uh, was not triggered? Thing because uh, now if you just go yeah. Sync user of the rules on the left side. Yeah. Uh, now we had these but successfully. Can I see rule, but, like, do we get a log of any of that? I think we, we do on the auth0 side. We have success, sign up. Uh, we have failed, yeah. So this. Okay, we have authenticate. Three minutes ago. But it, it didn't run the rule itself, right? I'm not sure. Have, have we set up the endpoint correctly? I I think so. Hasura, wait, I have you changed the Hasura endpoint to be the same as uh, in Hasura? Or maybe just using... What's the... the Sorry, can you say again what the, the endpoint is? In, in, the, in the code, right? The, the, custom, uh, the custom code that you wrote in uh, for the syncing your users. Uh -huh. 
you basically had the uh, the endpoint that you need to execute okay. mutation. Um, let me okay. So let me just hide the screen here for one second. Okay. So I've I've taken the the secret out here so that we can take a look at this code. Um, that. So this is the right endpoint. This yeah. is the one that, that's set the here. So just checking. I think okay. I know what's the problem. Our user ID that we are writing is user ID camel case. Mm -hmm. Now that's a variable. If you go and it sets ID and name. Oh, oh yeah. No, that's fine. That's fine. That's not a problem. And looking uh -huh. here, we've got. ID and name is email like do we need to drop email no not really uh well uh let's go to modify actually I think we do if you go to modify edit here yeah on email and name it's not nullable so we need to set them as nullable it's true okay and also for the name I was sending the name if you look at the code we set an ID. We set the name. Yeah, but in the in the rule itself. ID and name. Yeah, we set the name. So we like the problem was with the email. Now let's try to sign up again. Is this saved? Column modified. Okay. So let's try to sign up again. Let me hide the screen, add this thing back in. Or actually I can just get out without without saving, right? Um no, let me just for for extra paranoia let me let me do this okay so i'm adding the secret back in and it's saying that that's already saved so we are going to just leave out of that and let's bring the screen back okay so now we have um our role set up and it is sending an id we are no longer requiring an email field so in theory this should work this time. So let's go yeah. back out here. I'm going to log out. Didn't like that at all. Let's uh, log in. Not my account. Let's try a different one. We're going to sign up with my inbox is going to look like a wreck after this. Um, <laughs> Let's do this. It's still better than uh, Cognito setup, man. Because uh, <laughs> when, when I did the blog post on Cognito, well, my my inbox was like, I don't know, like twenty. Uh, for, like, it, it, let's go to Hasura and check. Oh come on! Now I still have some things failing here. All right, what's going wrong? Uh, let me double check something here. So I'm I'm just what what I'm trying to to see here is uh, if we miss something crucial in uh, in the roles that is not explained in the in the tutorials uh, because so far we uh, it's supposed to work Heroku logs that is a good suggestion did we set them up yeah. How do you check? Uh, well, it won't be on Heroku because uh, if it's failing, it's failing on the um, like on the odd zero side. So, um, well, it's failing. Is it? But like, it would be sending the the request, right? Like, is it sending the request and then getting bounced out or something? It depends where it's failing. Right. It so can be. Maybe... Well, let, you know what we'll try to do? Let's take, let's try to run this mutation in Hasura. Like the exact same mutation. Ah, okay. Cool. We have the post request. Um, From off. Post. But it doesn't really give us any, it doesn't really give us any info, does it? No, not really. 
let's try to run this mutation uh, in the uh, like in graphical in Hasra. Okay, so we're going to to insert the user. No, let's so, just copy paste the mutation that we had there. Maybe the mutation was wrong because it's from the tutorials and tutorials has different data structures. So maybe that was the problem there. So basically, a mutation and nickname. And uh, I don't want the variables. I just want this. And then we're going to have to clean this up a little bit. But let's see. Okay, we insert users, we have an ID. Get rid of these line breaks. Um. Okay, we have to, uh, probably it will fail because of Update columns. We don't have these columns. Yeah. Okay. And so yeah, I, I told need a different ID. data structure. User ID, and then I need the name. Yeah, you, you can just remove the on conflict things. Uh, but yeah. So let me explain what is this on conflict. What um, I want to do basically is whenever it's sign up or login, uh -huh. I want to update the name. And I want to update the last scene. This is from the tutorial side. Okay. Now you just need to remove last scene column, and then it will work. Okay, so if I set this to and play, it'll yeah, actually work. It and then if work. we go into data, I should be able to see in the users table. Okay. Yeah. So, so I'm going to. Uh, one more time, I'm going to hide the screen so that I can actually get in here with the, the token. So let's. <laughs> yeah, a lot of a lot of hiding screens to make sure that we're not doing um, not showing people how to mess with us. So let's hide. All right. So I'm removing all I'm doing is removing last scene. I'm going to save this. I'm going to get out of the rules and I'm going to show my screen again. And all right, we are back. So that should theoretically mean that if I log out and log back in, and this logout's going to fail because I didn't set a logout URL. Um, if I log in, in theory, because it shows up on login and update, it should update, right? Yeah. Let's try it. Okay. Here Success. We, go. we did it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So that's now good. what we will do. Now what we'll try to do, we will actually add roles. And okay. let's see how it works. If you grab this token that you get from the uh, from the console, you just go to all zero uh, demo up we had and grab this access token. Access or ID. ID token. Okay. Am I going back to JWT.io? Yeah, you can just check in JWT.io that everything works fine. Okay. And we've got our roles. User ID. User ID. And the user ID. Yep. Right. So what we will do now, we will actually go to, uh, to Hasura. Here, and we will add. To, we will go to graphical. Okay. Now you will write uh, like add another header, and it will be authorization header. You'll write authorization. And the value will be bearer. And then is the it token. capital bearer or is it lowercase? Like like that. And uh, then the token, yeah. So what will happen right now? 
if you remove X, right now it won't happen anything because access for admin secret overrides authorization. Now, if you remove that, you see you don't have access. Uh huh. Let's set this access up. So if you go to data tab, and if you go to posts. Posts. There. And permissions tab. Permissions. You can set a new role called user, because remember we set allowed roles user. And then let's say uh, select permissions. We want to and edit we those, want and them. you do a custom check. Custom check. Now you want to insert a post with uh, the select post only for your user. So I will say that my user ID will be equal. You just check equal. And then you just uh, you can just click on this tiny access for user ID. Okay. So it will bring this access for user ID from custom claim and the compare. Now let's click on column select permissions. Uh, drop down, and let's uh, enable user to select to be able to see only title without ID, and on only the content. The content. Okay. And save permissions. Now it will happen if you get your graphical tab. You will be able to see only posts. And as oh, you can see, you can only that. query or subscribe. Yeah. That's slick. That's the role, man. Yeah. So that's super cool. So um, so the way that this would work then is like, so if I'm building a blog, typically speaking, you'd want the blog to be publicly queryable, but not publicly writable. So like right. I might set that anybody can query the blog, but maybe only certain fields, like not the, the ID or the user email or whatever. Um, yeah. But then they'll be able to, uh, they won't, like you'd have to log in and have the like author role to be able to publish new posts. But then you can only yeah. edit or delete your own posts, not somebody else's. Yeah, that's right. But what we can do like more easily, easier like for the stream and uh -huh. uh, what will, and it will be pretty cool. So when you insert a post right now, yeah, we have to supply user ID, right? Yes. So what we'll do now, let's go to data tab and let's actually insert this um, user ID automatically from the authorization token. Okay. So let's click on posts and permissions. Let's set insert uh, permissions. Now here we want to insert only if you are the user, right? So let's say with custom check and if user ID is equal to user, to access or user ID. Now that's not enough that you will be able to insert, but you still need to supply an ID. Now you can uh, click on column insert permissions. Okay. Then, uh, sorry, on column presets. Uh, yeah, first of all, permissions, you will uh, enable people to see ID, title, and content. Um, okay. And then for column preset, you will say, take a user ID. Okay. And uh, it will be from session variable. And just put user dash ID here. Oh, that is yeah. dope. Did that work? Oh, no, I have to actually like type it in. Yeah, you um, have to write that. Now, the cool ID. part in custom claims, you can pass not only user ID, you can pass any custom configuration that you like, and you can basically insert additional fields or whatever yeah. you want. So okay. it's pretty configurable. So if, so if I you save, that, save this, and then I come now let's over to... insert the post. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Let's get rid of that. We're going to insert a post. I need content and title. Okay. And then I need to get something back. I guess we'll just yeah. do affected rows. Uh-oh. Uh, yeah, I just remove the query variables. Okay. Cool. Now, if you go to data, you will see the post for the user ID. Sick. That is. Yeah. Uh, that's super handy. I mean, this is uh, this is 
really, really good to know because like I find myself doing things like this, but it's all this kind of manual kludgy, let's move the ID from here over to here. And then, you know, I don't have any cleanup. So if somebody deletes their user account, all their posts just like sit in the database until someday I'll finally get around to cleaning it up. So being able to do these sorts of automated things is, um, is really, really handy. Yeah. Now the cool part with like new features, remote joins, we can say something in addition to that, we can say that, uh, you know what, I want to bring data from all zero profile for person and it will be a remote schema. Now with remote joins, you can say, I have the user ID. Let's yeah. connect my user ID from all zero to the profile on remote schema. And let's just connect this. Uh, I figure out that when I point in with the, with the hand, like I'm out <laughs> of the view. So. <laughs> it's like you have one schema, yeah. which is auto-generated, and the other one is remote. And you can yeah. connect between, let's say, uh, a user ID to um, like auth zero user ID with all the data. And you can bring everything in one query. So it's a pretty nice thing. Oh, that's, that's super yeah. cool. Um, okay, yeah. cool. Actually, so we have this, uh, we have the, if you're interested in like learning more about remote joins, so we have this page that was set up. It's hasura.io, uh, slash, uh, remote dash joins. Uh, and this is like, um, uh, yeah, we have a hashtag join all the things. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I told t today at, I'm at GraphQL conf, so I told today that I probably need the sauron ring you know the one ring to rule them all but oh, okay. <laughs> i mean it's not associated with good things so join all the things is way better yeah yeah but uh yeah um, so what we need to do now is to set up gatsby and connect everything so i'm i'm a little uh a little concerned about time just because it's uh we've got like 25 minutes um and so one thing that we do have is we've actually got uh do i have Let's see, one of these, this one. Um, so in here, yeah. we have a, a live stream that we did with Auth0 on here. Hey everyone, it's uh, Jason Langstroth. Let me shut that down. So I got on with, um, with uh, uh, Otto and he taught us mm -hmm. how to do a full Auth0 setup. Um, so I don't know that we really have time. Like I'm, I'm basically, I'm just worried we're going to run out of time and I don't want to go too far over. Yeah. It. Um, so it, I think, is there anything out of the ordinary with this setup or is it just like a straight auth zero setup on a Gatsby site and then we can make calls? No, it's just straight auth zero setup. You see, we, we've seen this with like pretty simple, um, like just wrapper that they had for React mm -hmm. and we have everything working. The, well, the thing what we need to do is to pass a uh, authorization barrel token. Yeah. And we actually did that, that with access or uh, admin secret in a previous stream. Yes. So I guess so having these two streams, well. all zero one and the one that we did, it's, uh, it's a good thing. So what we can do actually during the stream and will be pretty enough time for that. Maybe if we just take these two projects maybe combine them or I don't know, like uh, t uh, you tell me if we uh, have time for that, because basically it's just combining two projects. Uh, we could, we, yeah, we could, or we can that. just go through the features that we have, uh, like the new features that can, uh, um, uh, work well with Gatsby. As you can see, we have the, the authentication or we can actually discuss authentication, how it's done on, uh, AWS also. So it's up to you. Um, yeah, I mean, I I think we can, yeah, we could do any of that. I mean, we could also kind of call this a stopping point. We've got, um, you know, we've got like a pretty powerful setup here for um, this, this particular repo uh, is the one that we built last time. And that is yeah. here. So I'll share All that right. video as Hello, well. Hello, everybody. Um, it's Jason back again. Yeah. Um, um, I was talking from the space, not from the hot zero. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so so yeah. this one will show how to actually set up Hasura with a Gatsby site. Um, the other the other one that I shared will show how to set up Auth zero with a Gatsby site, and by combining those two, you'll be able to do authenticated Hasura calls. Um, the the main thing will be just 
making sure that you include this um, instead of the Hasura admin secret secret, you'll include an authorization token that includes your um, your bearer token, which you'll get from the uh, the auth zero calls. Um, so yeah, I think I mean uh, t in in all honesty, I'm I'm very hesitant to start building something else because I think in in yeah we minutes, can we're just run go short. It, into like two hours. Or something. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but. <laughs> Um, it depends, like what, uh, like if we want to do editing and stuff, yeah, probably we'll hit two hours mark. Yeah, okay. yeah. Uh, but what I will, sh I will actually share it uh, also on the stream. Uh, just a second. Uh, so uh, where is the stream? Yeah. So I uh, actually uh, have this blog post, which is um, Sura authentication explained. And basically, if you're not using Auth0, but using Firebase, uh, um, like custom auth, uh, Cognito, mm -hmm. like all of these, you can just uh, use them. And it uh, kind of explains uh, how to do so. Uh, also, I have this blog post. Just a second. Uh, let me share it really quick. I'm I'm trying to hit. Oh, that's funny. I'm trying to share this in the chat that I see on the screen when you're live sharing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I'm just clicking on that. Like, what's going on? Because your mouse is is there, and I was like, <laughs> oh my god, what's going on? Yeah, uh, funny. So, and I have this one, which is how to use Amplify CLI and uh, Cognito to add auth. Cool. And uh, yeah. So all of them can work um, pretty straightforward with Gatsby and will actually enable you to create your blog CMS, like production, create blog CMS with authentication role management. Gatsby will, ha will, ha will handle all like server side rendering and progressive web app part. And I mean, I'm a big fan of Gatsby, actually, uh, of Gatsby. How do you say Gatsby or Gatsby? I always say Gatsby. Yeah, because I I heard people saying Gatsby or Gatsby like uh, I, th I think but it's yeah, a Gatsby. I think it's the American like ah eh, Gatsby yeah probably <laughs> probably because in London it sounds different <laughs> yeah yeah um yeah. okay so uh, Vlad where can people find you where should they where should they go to to keep up with you yeah so I post uh, on Twitter on a daily basis um, I stream on Twitch uh, we have our um, Hasura channel which is uh, twitch.tv Hasura HQ uh, yeah this is my Twitter uh, Hasura HQ and will be Inception because uh, we are hosting your stream right now oh, <laughs> so nice. yeah pause that um yeah, but uh, we are tw we are streaming on uh, Thursdays. It's right after your stream, actually. Your stream oh, cool. is uh, you're streaming at nine a.m. PST. We stream we are streaming at eleven a.m. PST. So we don't oh. collide in any way. And uh, yeah, cool. Uh, we're doing this on a weekly basis. Either me or someone from the team. We have YouTube channel so, uh, HQ on YouTube. Mm -hmm. uh, I also have my own channel. I did several boot camps there, which are free. It's like 10 hours of live coding. Uh, and uh, yeah. Uh, Is that at uh, Vladimir can... Novik? Hmm? Uh, no, it's V Novik. V Novik. Okay. V Novik, it's. Uh, okay. Yeah. Got it. This is my Twitch stream. <laughs> and yeah, it's like building Cyberbank future because. Uh, I'm doing web, mobile, AR, VR, IoT. Probably if I add AI and blockchain, that will be. Oh, cool. <laughs> um, and I just realized yeah. there was a question that we did not answer, um, which is what's the pricing like for Hasura? It's free and open source. Excellent. So you can run it in Docker container. Now we have, uh, yeah, we, ha we offer support to Slayer Consulting if you want to go into more like enterprise level. Mm -hmm. but um, it's not like adding more features or something. It's just getting better level of support and maybe custom tailored development for, for you. But uh, so you can use engine like free and open source. It's on GitHub. Um, uh, if you just search GraphQL engine, Hasura, 
uh, GitHub, you will get the link. And it's Mono Repo, so we'll have lots of communities, community resources there. Um, yeah. So if you just uh, and uh, one one cool thing there on on, on the repo, mm -hmm. if you go to architecture tab, architecture folder, sorry, and we have live queries part, and we actually can support up to one million active GraphQL subscriptions. Oh damn! And live queries. That's super and cool. yeah, this is this is post explaining the whole architecture and benchmarks. Cool. So you can read this. And uh, yeah, we offer uh, lots and lots of stuff. In addition to that, there is a cool um, architecture proposal that we really um, kind of want a community to, to follow. If you go to 3factor.app uh, website. So this is uh, like if you scroll down. Scrolling down. If you zoom a little bit on three-factor architecture slide, on the on the image itself. Oh, why is that not working? Yeah. Here we go. Yeah. So the idea is, it's sort of like uh, I like to say it's like a Redux for the whole stack. So oh, you have your app, you have GraphQL API, your state is your database, and it triggers events on any database changes. And uh, you can execute serverless functions that will create like run mutations using admin secret and uh, will push stuff into database. Now, then you, uh, because of subscriptions, everything is pushed to the client. Oh, now, very cool. Currently, it's um, like eventing system works on changing that, uh, like inserting stuff and updating stuff in database. Now, th something that we are discussing and working on is something is called like uh, action mutations. And right. The idea is to give you an ability to write your own mutations that won't write data into database, but will trigger an event. Gotcha. So it's also like a concept that we, we are working on and we kind of want to hear ideas about that. Yeah. Very cool. All right. Well, Vlad, yeah. thank you so much for coming on again. Um, this is super fun. I It's always kind of fun to debug problems with you, so I appreciate you coming on. Yeah. And um, thank you, everybody, for watching. We've got some, some pretty fun stuff coming up, so if you want to follow along, um, we've got... Let's see. I'm out next week. I will be on vacation. But following that, we are going to launch into a whole month of, of really cool Gatsby-themed stuff. We've got... Uh, Jackson's coming on oh, to teach us so about... Cool. Uh, like composition and styling. This is going to be diving deep into theme UI and how to make that stuff really shareable. Um, Chris Biscardi is going to come on. We're going to talk about theme-based UI microservices or what has recently become very popular as uh, micro front ends, which I didn't realize was going to be controversial <laughs> when I when I booked this. Um, so we'll talk about that a little bit. Then I've got uh, Amberly Romo is going to come on. We're going to talk about using an RSS feed to build your entire website. So. You'll install a theme, set an RSS feed, and the whole website will will power itself up. Uh, all sorts of cool things coming up. So um, yeah, definitely go hit the follow button and subscribe to uh, to follow the the Twitch stuff that's happening. I'm on every Thursday, with the exception of next Thursday. And until next time, thanks for watching. Yeah, thanks for having me here on the stream. <laughs>